The flexible wing for adaptive flight was a design generated by David Anderson, Canton Matson, Jacob Spanier, and Zachary Posh, with help from Dr. Chad Olvin and Dr. Jordi Esteva Diordal, funded by NDSU and the United States Navy. Our objective was to design a flexible wing to be used as the blades for a helicopter to achieve maximum performance in any flight condition. Helicopter blades range from 20 to 30 feet long, and the blades rotated very high speeds. Because of this, we had to keep our design light, so we ruled out mechanical methods of airfoil manipulation and opted for smart materials. Due to the speed of rotation, the deformation of the airfoil needed to be fast, and as with almost any aviation design, we needed a factor of safety of 1.5. The nature of our project called for multiple rounds of design and testing. This video will walk you through the evolution from our first ideas to our current design. Our first concept was inspired by the skeletons of fish and how their tails oscillate up and down to move through the water. The goal was to pair this design with nitinol wires or springs to achieve deflection and then cover it in pre-stretched silicone skin. The smart material nitinol is an alloy of nickel and titanium. Nitinol wires are set in a certain shape and then deformed to another shape. Once electrical current is sent through the nitinol, it will attempt to return to its original shape. Another concept we came up with had wave-like leading and trailing edges to allow for ease of deflection while providing a skeleton for the pre-stretched airfoil skin. This design would also make use of nitinol to warp the leading and trailing edges. At the end of the spring semester, we had decided on a radically new design. This design made use of a lattice structure of 3D printed carbon composite for strength throughout the airfoil. We opted for two flex points on the wing and planned to achieve upward and downward deflection using nitinol compression and extension springs. As we began to order materials in the fall, we were able to test the nitinol and silicon skin. Once we tested the nitinol on its own, we found that our final design from the spring semester wouldn't work, so we switched back to our waveform design for airfoil testing. Testing showed that the nitinol deflected our airfoil, but not at the speed that we needed. This prompted us to switch to our backup plan, Macrofiber Composite Smart Material, or MFC. The pre-stretched skin we had envisioned didn't pan out like we had hoped, so we cut our losses to stick with our timeline. MFC is a piezoelectric material that responds to voltage instead of current like nitinol does. High voltages are needed for maximum deflection of the MFC, so we created an amplifier circuit to control it. Towards the end of the fall semester, we shifted our design and material to a hollowed out design with accordion-like flex points. Because the heat from electrical current was melting the 3D printed airfoils, we switched to aluminum to make our airfoils. When we tested our new design and materials, we found that the MFC deflected much faster and it didn't create the heat we expected, but we needed to modify our airfoil design. For our final round of design, we modified the airfoil to allow for more flexibility in the leading and trailing edges, and then we 3D printed a couple sections to be put together for wind tunnel testing. Because of the material cost, we weren't able to buy enough MFC to cover the leading and trailing edges of each section, so we only put MFC on two sections to test deflection in the leading and trailing edge. The sections will be connected together by a support rod for wind tunnel testing, where we can see how the MFC performs when subjected to flight conditions.